Hello and welcome to the Future of Hidden Movie Gems podcast. I'm your host, Ty Spiker Christensen. I chose you. I came here to see you. And we've got Jordan Christensen on the pod. Sansa Thunder! <laughs> and we've got Cameron Mickle on the podcast. I, I can't do the calculations in my head. <laughs> and we've got Valerie Mickle, Mama. <laughs> in the end, the light will overcome the darkness. That sounds like a really good quote, but I don't I don't remember that one. When does he say that? Who says that? Is Christ. That, uh, Christ says it. When does he right? When does he say it? I don't remember. At the end of season one, yeah. I this is a whirlwind of yeah, a show. I know. Guys, we got to get into this. We're we're reviewing the chosen. You were the chosen one. Sorry, that's not a quote from this one either. <laughs> Anakin. Uh, this. <laughs> I loved you, Anakin. Guys, we're reviewing the chosen. This show started in 2017. It's now at two seasons, and they're free. Download the app. If you're listening to this, you can watch the first season on Prime. Absolutely free. Free. We're just giving it away at this point. Let's get into this show. What was it like watching it for the first time and now rewatching it for the podcast? Let's start with you, Jordan. I think you've seen it several times, right? Not several. I think you passed me because I think both of you guys did. I might have started before you, but like the Vid Angel commercial where they're like, mom's always pushing it on everybody. Mom and Ryan were pushing it on everybody. Like, oh, you need to watch this movie. And I'm like, oh, geez, yep. it's another cheesy church show. And The Chosen sucks, I think it is. Yeah, there's this like meta commercial with a bunch of demons in the under afterlife. And they're all sitting there like trying to discourage people from watching The Chosen and the people that end up liking it. I love that there's one demon that's like, I actually want to be more like that Christ character. And then she gets raptured up into heaven. He's like, not again. I haven't <laughs> I seen that. That sounds fun. Oh, it's hilarious, Mom. We'll have to send it to you. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty similar to there's a TV show called Your Pretty Face is Going to Hell. And it's it's like all these demons and like there's a calendar and every day is Monday. And it's just like they're poking fun <laughs> at like what it would be like to be a demon. Anyways. That's what C.S. Right. Lewis wrote. Right? The screw tape letters. Devils in training. So, guys, let's get into uh, Jordan's Only Seen It Once. What was it like watching it for the first time then? Oh, uh, yeah. So, I mean, I absolutely love the show. Like, it's so funny because I keep hearing from everybody that it's, like, so good. But... And I think this one amongst like other feel good movies, I'm like, I know I'm going to love it once I watch it, but it's just getting to watch it. Like Green Book. And this, <laughs> this I, one just feels like a Sunday school lesson. People are telling you like, why didn't you watch the show about the life of Christ? You're like, I know, I know. It's just, I have to watch all these other hedonistic shows I'm watching right now. I, <laughs> yes. I know, I, right? You can't imagine because you've seen enough church shows and everything that you're like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and I, I thought it was just going to be like the Bible shows or anything done by a church. Bible videos. And they're just kind of like very wooden, like everything is very, because they're, they're keeping so close to the material and it's just, I don't know. Yeah, they I didn't want to take a lot of liberties, liberties right? Liberties. Mm -hmm. which this show does. And it, it also, I mean, maybe this isn't a very good to compare this to, but it kind of reminds me of Cobra Kai where it's just like, you really feel for everybody because they're not perfect. And I, I just love that. Yeah, you know, I, I definitely think Johnny Lawrence and Jesus know, are very similar. The Christ. Yeah, Jesus Christ. I'm, not talking about, I'm talking about the apostles and how they're humans. Like, I just like yes. that. Yes. Because I always thought like, oh, they're perfect human beings and they were born perfect. It's so relatable, right? That, yes. In that sense. I love that about the home yeah, Jordan show. really relates yes. to Matthew. And and the reason I said you guys probably <laughs> passed me is because I did an episode every Sunday. I wanted to space them out because every single episode I would just be in tears. I'm just like, ah, there's only, I think, one episode that didn't make me cry. And it was because it was the one where, you know, Christ is like the little kids. He teaches them and stuff. Because I just kept picturing like, if under the wrong context, like, if it was just any I, other I wandering know, guy, nowadays, it would be really disturbing. Like, I creepy. had a hard time with that one too. And honestly, yeah. Because because nowadays, yeah, we just are like, don't ever be alone with a stranger. Yes. <laughs> Bring your friends, too. It's pretty tragic to say, like, where we're at I know, right and he now. says, no. I can tell you I'm good. And like, yes, because you're Jesus. But <laughs> how many are Jesus? <laughs> yes. Well, it's so tragic that, yeah. I mean, you're talking about where we're just taught to view every. I mean, like, I remember walking to school, right? On our own, right, Mom? Yeah. Would you even let us walk on our school on our own? Like, no. now everyone has a GPS tracker. Like, you're like, I know where my kids are at 24-7. I know. It's insane. It's, it's all just scary. chill. Let's go back to the 90s. I'll see you at dark. You know, if it's mealtime, I'll be home. <laughs> I'll be playing, I'll be playing we'll throwing, so. yes. I'll poking a dead cat with a stick at the canal, you know, and then I'll come I home at the end of the I walked up in the, the hills, the Bountiful Hills alone. I used to go up there and pray 
day and just walk and have fun. And it's like, I would never, ever, ever allow any child, especially a girl, to go up in the mountains alone. No way today. None of my grandbabies. Well, and Ty and I listen to a lot of podcasts about kids that just get kidnapped, especially back in the day when they didn't have cell phones because it was so easy just to disappear. Right. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, we're getting on this. So let's get back to I the... Know. Let's get back to the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Child kidnappings All is right. the good stuff. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's every woman's favorite podcast. It's just the, the, the serial killers. You know what? That's that's why women listen to those daytime TV shows with those serial killers and stuff. Women love this stuff. Like you said, Mom, right before the podcast, you were saying something about every woman's fear is a man murdering them or something. <laughs> yes, they're uh, the deep down ultimate biggest fear baseline is fear as a man the man would kill them i can't believe and you for men it's to be laughed at <laughs> that's right no you gotta put it that's freaking hilarious you shouldn't that's have told great. ty now he's gonna make sure that gets like hey you're just afraid i'm gonna murder you so just don't laugh at me because if you do that you're gonna strike <laughs> I, a nerve i know it's not interesting those are the two things yeah which totally makes sense yeah because with dad and me it's like yeah fear the anger and the All right, this isn't a therapy session. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. This is good. I'll tell you, watching The Chosen feels like a therapy session. I watched this show, I and I was, I, it wasn't anything like I expected. I, I love this drama. This is just a really good telling. It's not preachy. It's just straightforward. Here's the politics of the Christ life. Here's the, the culture that surrounded, you know, Jewish traditions and stuff. I was completely a, oblivious to. So I thought it was really insightful. I love that they don't use thee and thy. It's just straightforward you i just i can understand it better and that being said i mean i don't know as far as the historical accuracies and stuff like that uh because they did take liberties with the show but I, i'm so glad they did because i feel like i understand and feel and empathize so much more with not only christ's life but also the apostles and things like that so very glad they did so that was my yeah. viewing experience it was absolutely wonderful uh guys i don't even need to sell you the show it's got 100 percent rotten tomatoes 99 percent from audience members on imdb it sits at was that one percent really? uh, nine Point four. <laughs> yeah, it sits at a 9.4 out of 10 on IMDb. Like, there is... I have not seen a show that's ranked that high. It's over 21,000 ratings. Yeah, uh, 26 now. And, uh, wow. again, I'm... So I'm blown away. Like, I mean, and, and you watch it and you understand why. Because, again, I think tackling a story like this probably was really hard because there's probably, like, a lot of tug of It's like, well, you need to make it more like this or you need to do more of this. When you just watch it, I'm just swept up in the story. I care about these characters. And I love the fact that we're learning all about the disciples' lives before they join Jesus. And after they joined Jesus, how difficult it was for them. Because I, <laughs> I'm always casting the first stone. I'm like, how could they do doubt that this was the Savior? It's like, right. they never really did. It's like, they were just like, what do we do? Like, he's doing his mission, but I don't know what I'm supposed to, like, what am I even doing here? Like, I'm, and he doesn't I'm give no them disciple. All, he doesn't give them all the answers right then, do no. they? They're, and they no. like speculate. They're like us, right? We we have yes. faith. We don't know all the answers. And so we want to know all the answers. And you're like, think, he's there. Just ask him everything, you know? <laughs> yeah. but well, I have you here. Uh, I know you're really busy, you know, <laughs> planning to save the world and all. But listen, I, I have a few questions. I have some questions. <laughs> just like the one that could have been healed, right, from his infirmity. And he's like, why don't you just ask him? You know, it's kind yeah, of there tricky. were a lot of people like that. The blind woman, I'm like, why doesn't she ask yet? I just thought it was so interesting. It is. I Isn't loved it? it. I love it. Well, oh, gosh, yeah. I love it. And there was, like, so when he came to the pool and just healed that one guy, it, it had purpose. I just thought that was so interesting because I'm like, why didn't he just go and just heal everybody? Like, yeah. I just thought that was so... I love oh, that, how they it's, showed it's, that. It's against the law of Shabbat. <laughs> 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 Yeah. You can't take up your bed and get out of here. Yeah, I know. Shmuel will you. correct you on Shmuel. 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 I love that he Shmuel. did that twice, too. He was, like, showing them, like, the whole Ox in the Mire thing. Like, it's okay, like, if somebody is, like, like the guy with the crippled hand. Like, I just, uh. The miracles were also, like, like not even just a, a, a grace extended to this person, but also usually resulted in a disciple, yes. a follower, that was related to somehow this miracle. Like, uh, in addition to that, I also like that when the miracles performed it also helped the sadducees and pharisees get one step closer to betraying the christ like that's what's going to happen right i mean this is an inevitability that's going to happen and it has to happen under the jewish tradition and jewish laws like hey we're not going to be able to uh you know uh let christ go unpunished he's he's performing miracles you know on shabbat and that's like it's no, a no-no so well uh, and it's interesting it's just, too those awesome. those pharisees that were like some of the people they were talking to are like ah it's not a big deal like people do all sorts of stuff all the time and 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 then and then he goes and they keep trying to find the right person, but then they find the wrong guy, and you're like, Ugh, maybe you shouldn't talk. 
talk to this guy, he's like, oh, we will definitely deal with this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the conspiring Shmuel, I think he's one of the better characters. I think I love him. I love to hate even him. He, and, even uh, he has like excellent character. partially like a soul and a brain. A couple times you see him start to kind of question and doubt. And the guy's like, no, this is like we will pin other people against each other. And you're like, man, yep, you started this fire and now you can't control it. Yes. Yeah, that's yes. a good point. That's great. Right? Yeah, for sure. It, it's it just makes it not so one dimensional. But in addition to that, I love how yes, he, he's conflicted with this because he's like, listen, these are the rules, these are the laws we have to obey. Like we're not above the law, are we? You know, like he's not wrong. He's that guy that's letter of the law, and you're like, dude, relax, follow the spirit of the law more often. He's like, but you're not in bed by ten. Elder. We need a, we need to call mission presence to go one us. street out of our area to go to the bank. <laughs> and he yeah, and he called us vipers. Do you know what a viper is? Is that what? The, <laughs> Yeah. He's like, they eat their young. What is it? They do something terrible. I can't remember. But, yeah, I think it's like they yeah. eat their way out of the womb or something like that. Yeah, there's something crazy about them. <laughs> they're, in, they're snakes, though. But it's like they, they call us that. Eggs. What, yeah, what does he say? And that? I love yeah. how Nicodemus just kind of laughs about it like, oh, well. <laughs> so he called you a name. What did I always teach you guys? If you get called a name. Are you that? Are you that? Well, then Are don't worry about it. <laughs> But what if what if I am a stinky butt, Mom? <laughs> uh, then that's something you got to work on. <laughs> Cameron, how about you, man? What was it like watching it for the first time? Were you watching it for the pod? So, yeah, watching it for the pod was my first time. And similar to Jordan, this was pushed on me harder than cocaine. Because um, <laughs> everyone in my family, because then Jordan was also a convert, and so he started trying to push it on me. And um, So we all had to stop and step back so that Cameron could... So, yeah, so after everyone stopped pushing it on me, I started it on my own. <laughs> I knew that would happen. <laughs> and then, yeah, kind of similar to Jordan, I was just really impressed because I was similarly, I was expecting to be super cheesy and especially mom recommending it. I was like, oh, it's about to be really cheesy and super spiritual. Yes. I was like, about to be oh. terrible acting <laughs> because mom's like, oh, these Hallmark movies are the best thing I've ever seen. <laughs> they are. And so... Oh yeah, I was just super impressed with that, and I was surprised at how addicted I was. But and how, how like how they did such a good job, kind of like Ty said, getting where you get lost in the story, you laugh with them, like you cry with them, like and you just see how like you feel everything that they feel. So that's why I understand what Jordan's trying to say with the Cobra Kai is they do a really good job of putting you in their shoes and in, in the atmosphere really well. Brilliant, brilliant. All right, mom, what about you? What was it like watching it for the first time? So. The first time I tried watching this, The Chosen, I had to stop because I can't demonic do mom. the demonic, yeah, um, lady that was possessed. <laughs> this, is not, totally like, yeah, this is not re- Constantinople or The Exorcist, but yes, the first episode has. It's, it's, it's like, her it's like turning around. Yeah, yeah, she possessed. says one line. No. She says it shows one her, line. It shows her in her house and how it's you know Pretty possessed terrifying. her it's very terrifying yes. for people that are very sensitive to that and so i i was like i can't do this and i didn't it what's sad is i you know and so because people had said oh you need to watch it you know and so we tried and then i couldn't do that so we just didn't watch it again and then ryan pushed it more on us and he's like oh just you know don't just skip that one and go on but i did go back and watch the end of number one i think cameron was watching it or when did i see that oh, that was so beautiful when she got healed Ugh. oh my gosh the end of that was so beautiful how he heals her and i mean and then so yeah so byron and i watched them and just loved them and then i started watching them again with my parents my parents sort of moved in with us and so i did started grandma like the demon possession stuff mom <laughs> We didn't, we skipped number one. Okay. <laughs> and it was just beautiful. And it was so cute because my mom, she started making comments. She's like, I'm not being as nice as Jesus was in that. I got frustrated with your dad today. You know, it was just cute little comments like that about yeah. the movie and stuff. So what I liked about watching that second time, to me, I had gotten men confused because there's so many characters especially the first you know three four episodes there's so many characters i was like getting confused who is who and then so watching the second time it really solidified who you know andrew and obviously you know peter because he's a big you know or your presence, favorite character mom <laughs> matthew i love matthew i know well, i was watching an episode with mom and every every time he shows up i love matthew i love matthew <laughs> I love him so much. I do love Matthew so much. He is so unassuming. And to me, I just, he's just, 
to me, he's just pure in the sense that he has no outer motives. You know what I mean? He just like... Just calculations. <laughs> just calculations. I don't know. I was worried at first. I didn't like him. I was like, he's going to be a weasel. He's going to be the one that gets Christ killed. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I thought he was, this tax collector that was constantly ratting on Peter and stuff. And I'm like, oh, I don't know if I like this character. And then I'm like, oh, crap. He's one of the disciples. Got it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to like this guy. But no, he really grew on me. Yeah. A total bait and switch. Yeah. And just how he he wanted to know more. And the willingness, he had so much as far as the world, right? And he was willing to walk away from all of that. Without his fine kicks, I bet Nick would be really upset about that, leaving his fancy shoes behind. I know, right? He's so like, can I, bring my, can I bring my shoes with me? <laughs> <laughs> and just like, I wanted that guy that had the knife. You know, the, I don't remember which one. Assassin. Was. Yes, the assassin. I was like, can't we keep that? That could come in handy. Why did we throw that away? <laughs> <laughs> I get that Mom, same Mom, he's starting feeling. a revolution. He doesn't need knives. I know. I revolution. guess with, when you're with Christ, right, you really don't need any protection. But, yeah, I guess it's what it represented, right? So, yeah, to me, I just embrace and love it. I knew Cameron would love it. Just had to back off so he could watch it. <laughs> <laughs> and Jordan, because, yeah, you guys hadn't watched it either. So we were pushing. I had it in my bucket list. I knew I was going to see it eventually. It's just one of those like, oh, I'm not in the mood for this. Jordan's eventually means the end of time. <laughs> well, here we are reviewing it. Yeah. So I wanted to go around. Uh, you can say your two favorite things about the show and or I thought maybe you could choose your favorite miracle that's performed or something like that maybe is, is one. But if you already have two things prepared, you don't have to give it. I just thought it'd be fun to ask everyone their favorite miracle or which story kind of hit you in the feels. So let's have uh, Cameron start. Yeah a miracle because i have my two favorite things yeah cameron uh two favorite things and a miracle go for it Cameron. <laughs> okay well my first favorite thing is just kind of the i think they do a great job of giving context that's one thing i feel like the scriptures if you're not a freaking smart person like me and you just read this stuff and half the stuff doesn't make sense and you don't understand like jewish customs and everything you're like oh this is a little strange they did that but understanding kind of the scenarios of everything i think made everything make a lot, whole lot more sense because i never understood when they would talk about them being frustrated with jesus not like delivering them from Rome I'm like yeah like he's the messiah or whatever but like he's here to save you from like sin not like necessarily bondage but lip like growing up in an america in america where we don't have bondage or oppressors like i totally make sense like if jesus were to appear to like the jews during um world war ii and with hitler like how they would just be so mad at him like are you kidding me we're being oppressed and terribly treated obviously not to the same extreme extent but it's like we have these terrible oppressors who just ruin and make our lives so difficult why aren't you going to release us from them and it just kind of it's kind of a like a pattern of how that was because there's also like an i love how peter explains that he's just like that's the way of our people like being in bondage in in egypt and everything and how like he's describing how like they go through all these hard things as a people but i think he doesn't realize that also every single time they go through hard things they are delivered in some way shape or form which he was eventually delivered later that night by jesus and so i just think giving the context just gives like all the miracles a whole lot more meaning because otherwise it's just like saying things like oh he cured mary it's like okay cool but like when you see everything in her life and kind of how much that meant to her and like how far she felt like she had separated from God and then how that just brought her so far back. And that kind of goes into my favorite miracle was um, I loved Mary's healing. And then my favorite part about it was honestly just the fact when she relapsed. And I thought it was so cool how my favorite quote of his is when he says like, he's he said, did you think you were going to be perfect after I told you to follow me? And the way he said it like that, it was just like, it puts in perspective and you're just like, it's so silly to say, oh yeah, I'll be perfect after he calls me. But it's like... Or even what when she's like, you redeemed me. And he's like, well, it's not much of a redemption if here you are, you know, you're, you're back where you were. And I think that's significant too because sometimes I feel like if we if we call in Christ's atoning love and try to purify our sins and then we just go back to saying, making the same mistakes, it's like, oh, like I just cheapened this miracle that Christ performed in my life. And he's like, no. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Just keep keep trying. Keep like repenting. please don't don't yeah. give up. Don't feel shame. Yeah, like like and that's something that that's never that was never rang true to me or I, I didn't feel that ever. I always felt like, yeah, I have to be doing more. I need to be doing more. I think it's called scrupulos scrupulosity or something. More scrupulosity. There's more never scrupulosity an... or yeah. something like that. Yeah, it's there's... like where you like want to flog yourself. You're like, I'm not, I'm not good enough ever. And I think that that's something that everyone can go through in a stage of life. Yeah. Uh, I've definitely gone through that. I know many members of our family have gone through that. So 
I think that's a really and just really knowing, yeah, that Christ well is there and yeah. He's just so loving. What, what no think, matter how many times. What I think is cool about that story, especially, is because after she explains how she's like, "Oh well, I've messed up after you redeemed me," he said, "Look at me." Like that's all he asked of her was just to look at him. He didn't say like, "Oh, abandon everything and do this and that." He all he asked was like for her to look at him, which I thought was really cool. Yeah, which way are you facing, right? Yeah, you face him, and yeah, you might slip back, but he's there. And they made a point to do a flashback of Moses and the iron. Uh, oh, serpent, bronze yeah. uh, serpent, which is also another theme of this, which I thought was really cool. The flashbacks they do throughout the history. Yeah. That was fun really when they cool. start. Did they only start that in the? Moses is second such a beast, season? dude. Just yeah. a big bearded guy, like oh, just like like smithing away, a freaking yeah. bronze serpent. Yeah, <laughs> that was awesome, huh? Who they chose? He was so cool. He just hoists this giant bronze serpent. You're like, Geez. and it's so fun, doesn't? When they do those little snippets, so I'm tired like, of people complaining. Yeah. When they do those snippets, I'm like, okay, can we? We just do everything. Go back and do the Bible. Tell us <laughs> yeah. all of the stories. <laughs> just yeah, you have. The I want to see the Next flying story. serpents. Can yeah. you imagine these people all just getting bit by serpents and dying all around? And he's like, "Hey, just look here," you know. It's like, Hoisting that freaking serpent. And people up. are like, nah, "I'm not looking." Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And then, okay, Ty. And then, and then my second favorite thing is kind of similar to what it's been previously mentioned, but I just love seeing the the flaws in all the characters, except Jesus, of course, and just seeing, like, for example, my favorite interaction is just like Peter and Matthew. Like, it never ever like I was even a thought in my head that like two of the most famous apostles from the New Testament could. Be, like could have hated each other initially like because and, and totally understand and that i love it with each other yeah because it's so understandable because normally it's just like oh peter you're just being immature or simon and but it's like but it's so understandable it's like simon not only was working for the enemy but he went out of his way to try to ruin simon's life it's like he oh, i think you meant matthew was or sorry you were saying yeah matthew one i think you said simon matthew was working for the enemy right yes i was saying he Tax i was collector. saying matthew was going out I of just, his way to, i think I, know, I, I think you said Simon was working for the enemy, so I got confused. No, I said he was working for the enemy and personally trying to ruin Simon's I, he, life. He technically was at the beginning. Remember, he was working and he was about oh, to rat out yeah. those people. He was. Oh, that's no, a good no. point. So you were so talking. you're not wrong. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So are you referring to the no, when Matthew? No, I'm in like the so first Matthew. or second episode. Yeah. I know you meant Matthew. No. I, that's but, what I was saying. But yes, I'm, I'm just aware. saying I'm Ty's aware. not I'm wrong. Aware. He's aware, Gosh. guys. Okay. It, yes. Simon is like, I'm going to give up these other guys that are fishing on the Sabbath to the Romans, and then he doesn't. But not really, but I'm trying to, to get... Smart guy. Get, to oh, get dude. out of my troubles. He's going to get him... Yeah, he's going to weave himself into Somewhere trouble. That's just, another, that's just another example of understanding the context, because when you're just like, oh, he, yes. they caught a bunch of fish, you're like, cool. Like, that's a cool oh, miracle, I guess. That but then when it's like, oh. this is me being separated from my wife and going to jail and losing everything I own, to being able to just like continue life as it is and for my wife to be like a-okay and be able to take care of her like sick mother-in-law or her sick mother good for simon's wife too put him in his place she's awesome i don't know why i think she's one of the best characters. well and i think i think it's kind of cool thinking about how much christ loved his um peter's family right the wife and because you we don't know for sure if any of the others were married right and stuff but we uh i love that you know he earned enough fish that would help her, his family, right? Well, and that he healed his mother-in-law, and then he like pers- and then leaving. he had like multiple one-on-one talks with his wife and told her like you were the first person to see what I've always seen in him. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Oh, I love that. That was really sweet. Awesome. How about you, mom? What are your two favorite things in Miracle from this show? I don't know if I can just say two, but I'll I'll say a only few. Two. Try Try to guess. So. Just only two. Just try to guess, mom. Mateo. <laughs> leave. Leave. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, Matthew? Matthew? I love... Two. So this is a little thing. Two. This doesn't count. No, it this counts. doesn't count as two. one. <laughs> two. Two. So You're just like Grant. Two. You're two. Your two camera. Don't it's worry. Two. Can, she can say after this. The, there's them. so many episodes. There's After the fish, <laughs> after they do the fish, and Christ is there, and he walks away and says, follow me, I'm going to cry. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> okay, okay, crying mom. is times two multiplier. It counts as two. <laughs> 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 and, you know... Andrew and John's dad tell, you know, they look at him and he's like, go, you know, go follow him. And they run through the water and just run after him. I just love that. That just, to me, just represents all of us in life. And, you know, we see miracles, but life is still hard, but we get to run after him. But anyways, so I love that 
moment in that scene. But that doesn't count. <laughs> that doesn't really count. Yeah, it doesn't count. That was just a very nice thing. That was just a random thought. For sure. so, That's going to get up to your two favorite things. So my favorite <laughs> miracle, well, first, yeah, other scenes that I love are Matthew and how he is constantly thinking and trying to piece this all together. And to me, it reminds me of all of us. We're trying to piece the gospel of Jesus Christ together, right? We're trying to make sense of it in our life. We're trying to make sense of it in the world. And I love his perspective because it's so innocent and sweet and how, you know, Peter thinks he has all the answers. And that's what I love about the show. It shows, no, he doesn't have all the answers, even though he acts like it. And he- <laughs> Standing there with this, his flex kinda... shirt, his sleeveless shirt. I love it. Oh, I it, was, it was genius too of Christ sending him out in the water and because when the Romans came to take him away, so he wouldn't come oh. and attack them. Good point. That was genius. Yeah. He, yeah. Knew. And, <laughs> he knew. And I love... We know what's going to happen later in yeah. the garden. And right? when he's I mean, like, the garden gets yeah, he's, he's like, kind of carefree Jesus. with that blade. And shouldn't <laughs> shouldn't we shouldn't we pick a leader now? Don't you think it's about time, Jesus? We should pick a leader. You know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, settle down, Prophet Peter. Yeah. I know, right? So and when do I get to be prophet? Come, I know. He's just so um, he's he's eager to do good, right? But, and good, right? He's a good guy, but he has so much to learn, right? And that's what I love about Matthew. Matthew is there to teach well, him that's what, a lot. Well, that's what I love about the Sons of Thunder, too. It's like, oh, Christ picked us because we're the hardest workers. It's like, no, it's because you're the most <laughs> racist. Like, that's exactly I, why. Yes. It's because you're the, you have the worst, like, prejudices against this people. So he's making you serve the Samaritans. Yeah, Samaritans. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he picks these people that and then it ta- um, and andrew's like i'm starting to doubt that about of he's like it's like no but he picked us because we were the best workers he's like i'm starting to question <laughs> that now so i i love that that's what god does to us in our life right we all have the experiences that show us our weaknesses that help us to become a better person right so my favorite miracle it's hard to pick because there's so many wonderful ones but you've just said yeah. like three so i get to no i haven't i have two miracles that i want to share mom's like okay Please, here's my three it. sorry Jordan, five if I'm favorites stealing them all. That's so okay. go for it my biggest favorite one is his first one of the changing the water to wine because he does it as a, at a request from his mother. I don't know why I would like that. No crying, but... please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not crying. I'm. It was just such a beautiful moment that his mom, you know, just totally knew who he was, obviously, right? She had raised him. But I'll bet you there was moments in her life that like, really, this is, this is it. This is going to be the one that saves the world and how is that going to happen and what's that going to be like and I just love her faith and how much she loved her friend that she wanted to help her out with this wine and you know the miracle of the wine and and how that would so she doesn't start. get ashamed Everyone in front of her him. her annoying could get in-laws. shamed in front of Gosh. the the in-laws yep, yep. and you don't know and isn't it cool we don't know everything right what how that happened but I love how they showed how beautiful that could be right and how that affected the people that sold the wine, or however many people, right? How, yeah. How many? Darren Thomas it? and uh, his lady of interest, or she's whatever. Darling, he's, he's she's darling, isn't she? I can't remember her name, but she's darling. So uh, Thomas and. Um, uh, yeah, just the remember. mother and how she looks at him, and how they look at each other, and how he honors his mother, and uh, that was beautiful. And so, um, but just really quick, little one. I think her name is Rama. Oh yeah. So the, Rama and Thomas. So the little the wine bibbers. Just another little miracle. Just I'll add. Oh my gosh! Sorry, I've, I've done more than two. I know, but okay. <laughs> when the man wakes up in the house and is healed, his leg. Remember him that hobbled and that didn't yep. feel worthy of Christ's love at all, and wakes up. Okay, that mind you, yeah, his story where he attacked someone. He, yes, he left and someone he for dead, he and he thought he dead. killed them. And I loved Christ telling him he's not dead. That was beautiful, wasn't it? And uh, so, yeah. No crying. Sorry, that I still. Oh, it's beautifully shot when he wakes up. When he wakes up that morning and Christ isn't there to witness oh. his jubilee, that's very unique because most of yeah. them, he witnessed the miracle, but this was like the morning after he wakes up with his family and it's just like an intimate moment between the, the family. I thought that was so well done. That is beautiful. Unbelievable. And, and yeah, Christ said, somebody's having a really good morning. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> he wakes up. And the house that's haunted, I'll take that room. <laughs> I hear it's haunted. I'll take that Oh, I'll take that room. 
I, I, I love it too how when he asks people um, to tell them what they're thinking, and he's like, do I, and the person's like, do I really need to tell you? Because I like, like, you can read <laughs> no, my mind. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jordan, how about you? Two of your favorite things in a miracle. So besides what what's already been said, I I think what I love is kind of giving because you read it in the scriptures, and yet sometimes I'm like, okay, I but they give context on both sides of it. It's like they're filling in those gaps. Like the guy that was raised down from the ceiling, I guess I never really understood why, but it's so cool to see like there's so many people that wanted to see Christ that it's like the only way to get that guy in through past the crowd was through that roof. And I, I just love seeing that play out. So it, I just, I love when they, they fill in all those little side things that they take liberties with because then it finally, I'm like, oh my gosh, that makes sense. And so, I don't know. I just love how that show does th- that. And I also, I always like tell people, I'm like, ah, oh, don't spoil the next episode for me. And it's like, it's in the Bible. And it's like, yeah, <laughs> no. but when I see it play out like that, you guys were just talking about the Samaritan story. I'm like, oh, is this the good Samaritan? Is Christ going to tell us that story? And so there'd be so many times I'm like, oh, is this like the speech that he's going to give at the end of season two? I'm like, is this going to be where he breaks the loaves and like in the many fish? Like, I, and I'm very interested to see how they go about it. So I, what I love right. about this this vision this director so has mount. is how he goes about telling the story. And you get to see it unfold. And it's fun to see those stories you've heard so many times throughout your life. And you get to see his interpretation th- of that. I think it's also cool to see because we never really understand truly the timeline because it's kind of hard to memorize like oh this event happened after this miracle after this miracle and then this little side thing happened so i think this is what it's really nice to see it in a storyline where it's a lot easier to process like oh did they like uh was peter like there like when they did this or was matthew with them yet like certain things like that that's just it just helps you see it more clearly and understand that i feel like right and, and going back to mom's miracle about the wine i i never understood any significance to that yeah I'm like christ was a partier like i don't get it. i don't get <laughs> You turn water to wine and they're like, hey, everybody, let's follow this guy. I mean, this is great, right? Like, why not? You know, and then it's like you understand that this was a moment where his mother asked him a favor. And then she they had this moment where he's like, if I perform this miracle, they're going to know like the wine bibbers are going to know. Some of the people at the party are going to be privy to the fact that we didn't have enough wine. And she's like, save the best wine for last. (laughs) (laughs) What's so great about that moment is when. Mary asked, like, Remind me if of not now, when, right? Like, this is your moment to now announce your your mission in life. Like, this is the beginning of the end. And that was very significant. And I liked how they used this miracle as a catalyst to be like, no holds barred. Like, from this moment on, I'm beginning my ministry, and this is the beginning of the end. And there's no going back, because once he performs this miracle, he immediately gets the following. He already has disciples lining up. People are following him, begging to to witness miracles, be healed, all kinds of things. And, and it all started with the wine. I never understood that. So I, I love that. I just wanted to add that to what you said, Mom, about the wine being so significant it was something that his mother asked but what she asked him like if not now and then he finishes her sentence when like this is the moment i'm gonna start my ministry i just thought that was so cool yeah well and i love they give context too to like why weddings especially back then were so important i mean they still are so important today but somebody like he could that's his reputation that's his job on the line if 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 there wasn't enough, like that would have ruined yeah. him forever. Right. No one would have done business with yeah. him again. Yeah. It would have been like, you know, oh, you're, you're not. And it's so sad too, because he, he like could have been overly prepared and decided not to be. It's just like a great situation. But again, I love that he did end up giving up his, his very uh, good profession, you know, right. uh, to, to follow the savior. And which is great because it's Thomas. We all know him as the doubting Thomas. Cause again, he's going to see Christ die. And, and like, know. you I know, he's going to have a struggle of faith. Like he's dead. I, I, I saw him die. Like <laughs> There's no way he's alive. And they're like, I'm telling you, he's been resurrected. I, I, again, I'm waiting for those moments to be like, right. I wonder if they're going to drop hints that he's going to start doubting more on. Like, And there was a few episodes where he does so. seem worried. No. I, I think it was a moment. And, and just because oh, right. whoever recorded recorded that moment, I think it's so unfair. We all have those moments. And- right, right. And, and what's so funny about that is like, it's not like he ever doubted Christ. It's like, I just don't, I, I can't believe that you would. <laughs> be alive like i saw him dead right. the savior dead right. and it's like what did, he wasn't there to heal himself was he and it's like no he was literally laid to rest in a tomb well i and love it's like when, he's, he's alive i love ty when Who knew? we're introduced to judas you're like you're like oh no oh, i like this I person that was such a heart i, I was that hoping was i would hate him <laughs> every every single disciple that kept coming i was like which one's gonna be judas which one's gonna be I judas know, which right? one's gonna be judas i kept asking i'm like i don't want to like him and then there's this young ambitious guy nice like i want to do guy. something with my life and he's like i, I don't want to just be making money like this this is like 
like, this is not honest. And then what's so tragic is, again, you introduce him with money because, again, he ends up selling the Savior uh, to the right. Pharisees and betraying him for pieces of silver. And it's so tragic because he's like a young, hopeful, ambitious person. And, you, and you're like, what's going to happen? Like, how are they going to tell this story? I'm very, right. very much looking forward to it because that's at the end of season two. You barely just meet Judas, one of the few remaining disciples. I think they're pretty close now. I think they have a few more that they still will t- tag along, but they have like eight, nine, ten maybe do they have all 12 disciples um judas is he the last one to join them will he be the 12th? at least in this story i don't even know yeah i can't remember you know, how many we've got biblically but, if that's the case but but how about how they teach us about perspective i cannot believe how powerful that episode was when they when he's healing all those people they're going to the tent oh uh, you're getting to my favorite thing oh, but my sorry, favorite miracle no you okay tell, no you i it. We, you just said what was my favorite miracle, but I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, mom's like, let me just say every one. miracle. No, dude, you know, no one's even touched my okay, miracles. Good. I can't. I can't. Okay, so, go, 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 so, yeah, one of my favorite ones, and it was very unexpected because every episode up to that point, I was like, you know, tears every time. And this episode, I'm like, <laughs> oh, there's so much fighting going on. I'm like, I'm I'm good. I'm not going to get in <laughs> no, tears. Fine. No crying this And then time. <laughs> all of a sudden, the last couple of seconds, you know, after Christ has been healing people all day long and they were all arguing, he just comes back and, you know, he just is, looks completely exhausted and and so tired and it, it just reminded me so many times of my mission just coming home completely exhausted from being spiritually drained physically drained and it just like yeah. it takes such a toll yeah. on you and you just pass out you know on your knees and you're just you're out and i love that when his mom is washing his feet and it's just it's so beautiful oh, and it was a gosh. perfect ending and i just i mean of course water yeah, that, that was the first episode i cried <laughs> Oh, gosh. Well, oh, well, I'm not going to take. No, no. Whoa, yours. mom. No. I have a couple other things then, to add too that I've been waiting like a okay. patient person. Whoa, whoa. whoa. I'm easy, wait, easy, wait, folks. Waiting. Easy. So <laughs> I, I will say two of my favorite things. One, um, I love Nicodemus. I think he's one of my favorite uh, yes. TV show characters That's of all what time. I was going to say. <laughs> where he's, he's like a disillusioned Pharisee. Dad cries that, every time he talks about him. He's a Pharisee, right? Yeah. And so he's trying to make sense of this world where he feels disillusioned because he's been a very high status. He has no reason to start doubting all this stuff he, he's a man of principle he's he's doing well for himself not to make complicated matters worse you know his wife's like don't don't mess this up like just just keep doing what you're doing I let's know, hang up right? for grandchildren like she wasn't asking him to do anything bad it was just like don't chase down this dream and and nicodemus it's really sweet because he has this meeting with christ and he's like i saw like i tried to perform an exorcism it did nothing for this woman the demon laughed at me and scorned me out of the room but you you healed this woman and i've seen her like you did this and he's like who are you? And like this conversation they have on top of a rooftop oh, is like so good. one of the best scenes oh I've seen well, between two so characters. He, he also had a gift. Obviously, if he was able to get rid of demons before, right? For other people. Yes. Yes. And, so he, and that's the he thing. He knew that this was well, yeah, he something said he said you had to have, way beyond. have had God with you. He said only a man who has God yes. with him could have done that. And he's played by Eric Avari and he does such a good job. I, you know, it's funny. I've seen him in things like uh, uh, Billy Madison and stuff like that. He's like a wacky zany character, but this is just such a uh, very sweet and subtle yeah, role where he stands on holy roof and uh it's so well performed oh. it's like yes. i stand on holy uh, ground I love it. or and roof. and there's this great moment where christ is like well come follow me he's like i'm an old man i can't leave <laughs> like i can't follow you and and, he, and so it's so touching when well because he'd have to give up gather, everything they're gonna leave yeah well, i love it he says the leave. invitation it... still stands even after he gave all yes. those excuses said the invitation still stands right the invitation still stands and so all the disciples gather up in the morning and they're all ready to leave and they find a bag of, of plenty of provisions and money left uh, Nicodemus left for them and he's just around the corner and he's like pained oh. because he's like I'm too ashamed to face my savior and tell him I can't come so he just kind of sits there and he's like hurting and it, it's such a powerful scene I love that and then he says you, you came so close yes and Jesus knew he was there again he knew the money came from him and it's just a very sweet moment and just so brilliantly done and then my second favorite thing uh, was the woman at the well I never understood any significance or context to this I always knew that Christ was saying like he who drinks from the water that I give will never thirst again I understood that as like the atonement, you know, you can you can actually fill yourself spiritually because if you, you hunger physically, you're going to need water and food again and keep replenishing your thirst and hunger. But if if you seek after Christ and have a life fulfilled following Christ, like that's everything you need. And what's so amazing at the woman at the well, they showed her whole backstory where she's fighting with her fifth husband. She's she's not happy in life. All the other women and ostracize even that her. One you're not married she's to. outcast. <laughs> and even that one she's not married to. Yeah, that's right. And, and she goes to the well 
no one will walk to the well with her. So she goes all the way out. You see her like draw the water. She carries these giant, like this this bar with the ropes dangling with these two giant pots. She should have been cast for water. She And she has to walk. And she has to walk. You see how far the fetching city is. And I'm like, my goodness. Like it just broke my heart. And having to walk it alone, it just seems so miserable. Yeah, and it's because she couldn't do it when the others, because of shame, right? It, yeah, because, yeah, they wouldn't let her walk with her. Well, no. and back like, then it was dangerous too. Her, mock her. Yes. Yeah. Yes. To go at a different You could time, rile them up right? and they had to freaking stone you to death and things like that. It's crazy. Anyway, what's so remarkable is that she's sitting at the well. Christ, like, lets the other disciples go and he waits there all day in the burning heat to meet the woman at the well. And that interaction really hit me because it's so powerful when she's like, I'm sorry you came all this way to meet me because I'm nobody. No one wants to see me. No one will talk to me. And he's like, you wasted their time. He's like, no, I specifically came here to see you. And it's <laughs> it's by far one of the most powerful moments. That's when the waterworks flew for me because the, like, I think every one of us feels a moment of inadequacy or, or feeling like we're not doing enough. We don't, we don't deserve or merit any. And that's the truth. We don't. That's what makes the atonement so perfect and the Savior's love so incredible in the show is he like makes these characters that seem like fables so relatable and so real and down to earth. And it's the just good that blew one me person away. can do and to change her yes. life. You guys saw yes. that on and your mission, yes. right? People As she change. goes back into town, she tells him, this man told me oh everything gosh. that I ever did. Have I told this you? Have I told you what he did? Have I told you? Yes, you've told me what he did. Yes, everyone you told. Everyone yes, in the, town so the whole town of Samaritan, all the Samaritans in this and town. And they I believe love this. her, They're all, which is very yes. unusual. They don't believe, they believe women her story. back then. Yeah. So that's beautiful. Well, she's got persistency, and I love that that her relationship is now bettered with her husband. They offer up their home to all the disciples to stay in. Uh, it's just very, very sweet, and I love that that she's now bettering her life. She yeah. has, you know, she's working better. I just, there's, it's so incredible. Yeah, you're so. right. She went back to her. I think it was the fourth husband, right? Because he, she was married to him. She wanted a divorce to be with the new guy. Yes, she but, was saying, "I want to be with someone." She but realized, then she went, "No, I'm yes. going to stay with the person I'm, I'm going to work. Th- I'm going to work right. out." Yes, and you see him. He's he's so happy that you know. Again, there's this just noticeable change in the air, and it's so awesome that all this is going on. The difference that they're making, like just this whole town is just alive and bustling. It's it's awesome. Now I'm going to get to my favorite miracle. My, and then I want to talk after ties. Um. My favorite miracle <laughs> is when. Christ heals the the the, the, leper, the, or not the well. Leper, the yeah. cripple. No, he's not a leper. Yeah, he's he's maimed. His whole life story. You see him like from a very young age. He falls out of a tree and he can't use his legs. And he grows up his entire life missing out on everything. And then he finally like it was the going theory that if you could get to this bubbling, uh, is it the waters of Bethesda? Yeah. Right. It would bubble up every day or every so often. And if you were the first to touch it, somehow it, it would heal you. Right. That was the going logic, or at least the. See, this what, what is, I, the I'm curious. I'm curious. Just to know if they that ever saw anyone who got to it first I healed. Know, I'm like, right. No, but see, then see, everyone yeah. would be healed. They'd be they gone. Did, right? I don't understand why they're still and there. And it's amazing because his brother, which is such a great tie-in, his assassin brother, uh, what was his name? Doesn't he look like Sebastian? <laughs> Maybe a little bit. Not Philip. It's the one, yeah, the trained assassin. I can't even remember his name. What's his name? Zebedee, right? Is that what his name is? Something like that. Anyway, uh, he, he's like an awesome trained assassin doing backflips and parkour and stuff. And he's like the cool guy. <laughs> Guy, but his brother grew up his entire life waiting at this this the well. He kept thinking that he would get healed. Christ shows up at the well. Well, I love that with, he started Matthew his with him. first of his life with his brother, so he had that he relationship. Did. He did. Yeah. And then his brother abandoned him because he's like, there's nothing here for us in this town. I'm going to make our lives better. I'm going to go join the, the resistance. The I'm going to go free kill us from the Romans. The Romans. So he, he goes down this road and it's very dark. It's very sad because he then ostracizes his brother and his brother feels abandoned. But even once his brother comes to visit him, he's like, what are you doing here? Like, let's get you out of here. This place is filthy. You're filthy. Like, this is yeah, terrible. Like, this is not a yeah, good also situation. This he's is like, like an you left me. Place. It's like you're worshiping false yes. gods. What are you doing? Yes. He's like, who are you to Which come is here and judge yes. me? Yes. And, it, and it's amazing fallout. And then what's so great is when Christ finally comes there with Simon and Matthew. Well, I love what he, he says tells to him. This is, guy, I don't know if that's accurate, but he's like, "Oh, you want you want to you want to share it, Cameron? You go ahead and share." It. <laughs> no, I was just saying the fact that yeah, I get so excited. The fact about that this, he yeah. said, "What's it called?" Like, I'll believe that the Messiah is real when I see you walk again. Yeah, did he, he say does that? say that? Which, yeah, yes, ah. and which is great because again, 
he's going to end up witnessing, right as he's about to perform an assassination on this Roman guard, he literally catches a glimpse of his brother. Like, and it's not by half a chance. It's a fetching miracle. He walks by and he sees what he believes is his brother and literally does not perform the assassination. And and the Roman was waiting for him, whatever his name was, the, the guy that hunts the, the assassins. That guy's great. Yeah. So who terrifying is and that menacing. Guy? Yeah. Is, who is Russell Crowe? in this he great. Play? Is he gonna... Russell Crowe. <laughs> he does look like Russell Crowe. That's what I first saw him. Yeah, I was like, like I think what? Ga- Gaius, Quintus, all the Romans in the I know, at first I thought he would believe in Christ, but then I'm kind of thinking maybe he's one of the bad ones. Oh, and the I bald headed yeah. guy, he's, he's oh, like he's comic so book villain. Yeah. yeah, he is. He is. He is. But he I love is. him. I love him. I love the convers- the, the writing. Him and Matthew. He might not be the best actor, yeah. but I like his character. He's, in the, he's like yeah, too uh, confident in his speech, yeah. where I'm like, what the fudge? Well, I just think he does like this evil voice. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> I'll let you work for me. And I'm like, what? Yeah, I love how I he's so great. different than the Jews, and that's good. The miracle, when he finally performs it, he like bends down, he looks at the this this guy that can't walk and he's just like do you want to be healed and he's like i've been trying and he said he breaks down he starts crying he's like i've been trying i've been here for years i try to get to the well but no one will help me and he's just like uh i know you've been here a long time and it's been hard for you but that's not what i asked you what i asked you is do you want to be healed and he goes i try but they pushed me out of the way and then he, he's like again i'm asking you do you want to be healed and he just breaks out he's like yes and Christ immediately <laughs> heals him. What's great is he finally, again, he looks at him. He's like, do you want to be healed? That's what, uh, like, uh, what I'm asking you. And then he's like giving all these excuses. And he goes, listen, there's nothing here for you. Like the, well, this is not going to help you. All you need is me. So again, I'm going to ask you one last time. Do you want to be healed? And he breaks down. And, and it's such a hard truth because it's really painful because again, Christ isn't like, he doesn't like, force his miracle up on him, right? He doesn't, yes. And and you're like, stop being so it's gosh darn stubborn. Take the miracle, yes. And on top of that, what was so powerful to me was the fact that when Christ is telling him a very difficult truth, he's like, there's nothing here for you. You wasted all this time. And that's like a very hard thing to tell someone because he has not had an easy life. Like he has had the worst, like growing up without his family, being abandoned for years, smelling, laying in his own filth, just hoping one day that he a miracle would yeah, come. He just told him that his baptism in the Catholic Church was not valid. <laughs> <laughs> And it's just so amazing when Christ is like, there's nothing for you here. And and that's just, a, it's like a hard hitting truth. But like, that's that high love and high expectations, right? And I, I love that. I It blew me away. It's one of the most powerful miracles. And then he like slaps his leg. He's got feeling in his leg and he stands up and he's like in complete disbelief. And he tells him to pick up his bed and leave. And it's so great. You have the two Pharisees sitting there. T- <laughs> they're just like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, doing? like they, they must have known this guy because he had been there for years right. laying there. And he's like, what are you doing? You can't pick up your bed. And he's like, what do you mean? Like, I'm healed. Like, look at me. And they're like, you need to get out of here. Lay, lay your bed. Like, you can't pick up your bed on Shabbat. It's it's so amazing. Like, and it's such a good moment of where you understand everyone's motives, the, the miracle, that why it was performed. And then on top of that, when he starts wandering through the street, his brother then sees him uh, right before his attempted assassination. And it's so good. It, it's. I think it keeps reminding us of how we can get caught up in the letter of the law and miss the spirit of the law, right? Absolutely. That reminds me of when Christ is looking at them eating the wheat and then, you know, uh, Peter's starving. Yeah, they're starving. He's like, go ahead. It's okay. It's the Sabbath and it's okay. And they all just look at it like, yes, you know, and it's beautiful. It's a beautiful It's like a mom telling a child that they can do something. Yes, exactly. Can we, mom? Like, yes. Uh, well, more like we would look at dad and then and then hope that mom would be okay with it. <laughs> well, or Jordan, when he he was trying to learn to fast and he would like come to me and he's just like, I'm dying. You know, and he's like, can I, <laughs> can I eat? And I'm like, Abs- I, I go, absolutely, go pray and eat. And it's between you and God. And then you're like, oh, I can't do it then. <laughs> Yeah, that's mom says. So up to you. <laughs> it's a guilt thing. <laughs> that's great, mom. Yeah, just know if you go to this party, just think, you know, does Jesus want you to go to this party? This, this was Cassie, yeah, when no. she wanted to see Titanic go with her friends because she was that's a right. little teenager and Titanic was out in the theaters and we said, no, we do. Well, dad said, she's old enough. We need to tell her. She said, we don't want you to go to it, but you can go to it if you choose. It's totally your choice. And she goes, that just means no. <laughs> <laughs> that's how cassie would take that but that's I yeah if you left that to me i'd be like see ya only see ya. At seven. 
Bye. I think my fa- one of my favorite things that goes along with my first favorite thing of the context is the Beatitudes. I think it's so beautiful seeing how he essentially wrote every Beatitude thinking of his apostles and, and thinking oh, of so like, wonderful. Yes. like, blessed are these guys. All of them have different strengths and different weaknesses, but like oh. because of like where'd you pick that up it shows it when he's telling the beatitudes <laughs> when he's with matthew and he's he's coming up with the sermon yeah. and, and he, if you notice he, every shows thing each he of the says, disciples he, it's like the characteristics of those people disciple. like he's like blessed are the peacemakers which is what's his name philip who's like the mm-hmm. the ultimate peacemaker ah. of between peter and and matthew matthew mm-hmm. and then it's like he's like blessed are the the meek and he shows the guy with the the limp and, and as well as like his uh, close friend i just think it's super cool because then it's just like jesus is essentially explaining like my apostles can be really dumb sometimes but they are so blessed and i love how he's, he looks right at matthew and he says blessed are you who like people revile you and say every mean thing against you for my name's sake for you shall like greater shall be your reward in heaven like i can't imagine the savior saying that to your face and literally saying like you even though he's saying like blessed are ye like he's saying blessed are you like because he's he wrote that thinking of matthew and so and, and think about it matthew had a really hard time because he was despised not only well that's what he, the yeah Jews, he even says he says no but one he's still despised he says, by no romans even me. though he worked yeah, for him. He's yeah. A, he, says, yeah. The, he said the jews hate me because i steal His from family them. my family ostracized him he, he said the apostles hate me because i worked for the romans he goes there's no one that wants me here wow that i want you true. here and yeah, yeah and and that's and he's okay with that that and he was yeah, despised even to follow Christ, right? The Romans were mad at him for that. So there was no place to go. Everyone, everywhere he went. Well, I think it's so interesting why, like, how important Matthew is, is because, like, just, like, because I've always like wondered why there was so little writing of peter and it's because like that's just not his personality because because yes I, and and, oh, and again real quick in season two the first opener they show him compiling all of his stories yeah one seeing matthew with this giant beard was so funny because <laughs> again yeah, like, that he's was a guy that would never let it grow long but he ended up letting it go no i mean like it's, it's a great uh, transition for yeah. him right? right but what's so great is when you learn the book of matthew he traces christ's lineage all the way back to like king david and you're like why would anyone do this and you really Realize the kind of person Matthew was. You're like, <laughs> okay, oh so. yeah, like that's important to him. He's so neat and orderly. He's like, I will find the records and make sure that this is well kept record. And you and, don't and realize, the, yeah, we needed yeah. him to write it down so he could have yes. make the Bibles. And again, Peter, like he's not going to sit down and write a book. Yeah, that's that's why <laughs> that's what did, all you have. It would be later in that's life. What, be all later you have life, are yeah, his epistles. Did. Like it's just him sending yep, messages. Yep. Like you guys are. Oh, I hate point. you. Like freaking repent. <laughs> that's all. He, that's only record we have. That's so in keeping with this character, which is why they the people that wrote this show really did their homework as far they as they know the bible their characters make sense with the the what yeah because if they would have said them, oh peter's a so note taker cool. i'd be like well, then why is there only his epistles and like oh matthew is kind right. of a but like yeah matthew is like the most meticulous and like has pro- i think yes, the most chapters and the most reviewed of everything and then yes. it's interesting how john like is keep, keeps track of all of that as well yeah it's, it'll john be the baptizer crazy guys or whatever <laughs> or, oh, oh yeah oh. <laughs> we didn't talk about him oh uh, yeah well i was just gonna I say in my nitpicks yeah his beard Oh please! Oh, that was, that looks so, so bad. bad. <laughs> like, so bad. It's like I why loved it. shouldn't have so had funny. one on so him. Wispy. Just he should have been. No, it, it was great. The guy looked like he'd been in and out of prison like every other day. <laughs> they, <laughs> did want... crazy yeah. uncle. They, did. Like, Jeez. they did want him to look great. a little crazy, I guess. Yeah. He, and so did, he looked weird. absolutely the part. And, he and what's it crazy. called? And I think it's so interesting their relationship because it's got to be one of those weird things where he's like the only person who's known like the real Jesus, like growing up, like teenage Jesus, and so he has like those comments where he says things where everyone's like, you're talking to the Messiah, dude. And he's just like, yeah, what do you know what you're talking about? And you're like, you're talking to the son of God, man. And, and John's like, yeah, yeah. Like, it, that was one other great scene too when Mary, uh, Christ's mother, was talking to the other Mary and uh, the wine bibber. What was her name? Thomas, I keep forgetting her name. You said it. Um, I can't forget Mira or something. I know. What was her name? I'll think of it in a second. Know, this this has as many characters as Game of Thrones. Rama. There's so many yeah. names. I'm like, I know, uh, Rama. Well, I'll learn them, you know, as they go on, but yeah. Yeah. Rama, they were sitting and and she was like, what was it like being the mother of the Savior? And she was like, there are probably times where it's like, you know, he was a teenager or a toddler at the time. Like, I mean, Christ was, again, learning his mission. He's still a perfect human, but it was like, it seems kind of unremarkable, right? It's like he would cry as a baby. I, like, he was helpless. Like, I had to help him in this physical world like with with basic things right i had to teach him how to pray i had to teach him how to put on his shoes and i thought that was a really interesting conversation he would have been the most annoying sibling i'm sorry but 
<laughs> the worst. Right? Yeah. I know, right? Being Christ's Being brother. Compared like, to him. Oh, okay. Why can't you be more like Jesus? Yeah, okay. Why can't be more like Jesus? What would Jesus do? That's where it came from. Yeah, I got it, Mom. Jeez. <laughs> what would yeah. Jesus do? Why can't you be more like your younger brother? <laughs> or your older brother? Right? I know, right? Literally. I yeah. wonder if Mary ever said that to Joseph, you know? <laughs> it's like, why can't you? What would Jesus do? It's like, don't compare me to your son. <laughs> it's not fair. Yeah, they don't tell us much. We don't know anything about his family. Did Are one of his apostles a brother? Which I am excited i think they can do flashbacks later on i think they can give us context because they jump around a few times yeah and show like historical context to the episode i also had which I no loved. idea that they could do that later that on. joseph had died like early on and how like he wasn't a part of Je- jesus like later it life. makes sense if you think about it, why wasn't he there at the crucifixion yeah. they never mentioned him right so we don't it hear makes about sense him. that he died again we don't yeah. hear about him yeah even nope. at the party for the wine or anything so yeah that's yeah, why no i think it's an that. assumption that he died yeah yeah either you know in this story they said he died who knows right you could have left mary who and knows? during these times you could have died of fetching anything got a cold and you die goodness gracious right? <laughs> appendix ruptured and you're dead yeah <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Appendicitis. Anyway, um, so would you guys recommend The Chosen? It's an emphatic yes 100%. for me. I don't know how to say this. 50, this is 50. one of the most sweet, just genuine shows I've seen in a long time. Oh. It's going to go on the top 10 shows I've ever seen of all time, for sure. Which, have we done that list, Jordan? That's what we're going to have to do next. The next list. Before, oh, is that the next before, list? We, before we do that, I just have a couple quotes. Can I share? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah please. Hit us well, and when quotes. you're looking that up really quick, I just wanted to say they picked the perfect Jesus. I mean, I've yeah, seen so many different crap. adaptations. Oh. He is amazing. And his accent, he I don't know what his amazing. accent is or whatever, but I it, it's like enticing. And it's just in like... In interviews, it, Cameron, he doesn't have that accent. No though. way. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Jonathan Rumi, yeah, he... You just want to be with him, dog. don't you? He makes you... He makes me feel loved. Also, like I... Like, he lo- genuinely loves I think, it. And it's all in his eyes, I think. Too. I think just, he just... also has, like, the perfect personality where he's he's totally a peacemaker, but then he, like, he will make personal jokes with everybody to kind of make... Because it's hard when you're around someone, like, of such an authority figure. It's kind of hard to be, like, like, can I be joking or casual with this person? And then Jesus will make jokes like, I'm not going to kill you or stuff like that. And you're just like, is he allowed to make that joke? <laughs> it's kind of like that nervous <laughs> laugh everyone gives him that I love. It's just like it shows he's like, like he doesn't want to be treated like, you know, the Messiah all the time. How would you like to be actual the the actor's wife? <laughs> And, and then you're like, you're not acting like Jesus right now. <laughs> <laughs> of course, mom thinks of that. He gets home from a day of acting. You Honey, make you me more like that a person. Yeah, yeah. You could use that a lot. Like, what would Christ say, do? Why can't you act? Why can't you act more like your, your character? Yeah, play your that show? character at home, would you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's a few just quotes that I had written down that I, I like. A few or I 20. Had to go, few? Yeah, a he talk he says, I'm preparing help, something Brady? to share with the world. Do you want to be healed? Oh, that was the part about making sure he still yep. had a choice. I love that. Yes. Yep. And then okay, remember those two priests that they ran into? It was right before they went and ate the wheat and he had healed that guy right there in front of everybody and the Mm -hmm. priest said if he were if he were to be healed god would have done it himself and christ goes that's an interesting point (laughs) (laughs) it's such a great line you know (laughs) it's kind of like cameron saying and then he says christ said who's worthy of anything because one of them said i'm not worthy and john says oh it was he was talking with john john says you because he said who's worthy of anything and then just a couple more i love when for the nets he says excuse me he's talking to um peter and he's like throw this down for a catch um worship one oh and then this is the the guy that you were talking about the bald guy i forget his name uh the bad roman guy oh he says um, that, daddy or something. yeah what's his name right? yeah when he when he was talking to matthew he, yeah he's I thought this was really oh, good. Oh, Gaius. No, Gaius is... Well, you mean the friendly Roman that likes Matthew? No, the... Bl- no, okay, the yeah, bl- the other one, Quintus. Yeah, yeah Quintus. Quintus. And he said, he said, you Jews are very interesting. I can't remember exactly how he starts it, but then he says, you worship one God, but all are divided. And it's like... That is interesting because do we do that same thing? Do we all say that we're Christians, but are we divided? Do we fight over politics? Do we fight over stupid things? Do You know what I mean? Yes, we do. We're so dumb. Why are we divided? Well, we, I, I love that about the show, Mom. It shows like, I'm like, oh my gosh, it, it kind of opened my eyes up to a different time period. That was kind of my second favorite thing is just the, like seeing that people were still racist back in the day. I was like, oh, okay. Like that's still, I mean, it exists throughout all time. 
It's just craziness. Right? Yes, it's so sad. All divided. I, I just thought that was powerful. Class. Like, it, if you were, yeah. like, depending on what you were, it's like, oh, wow, you're a poor person. Don't talk to me. And I can't remember when he said this, but he said, maybe God can get your attention now. I can't remember who he said that to. Sorry, I should have written down who. Uh, Fear not, for I have redeemed you and have called you by name. And, oh, I forgot to mention that one of my favorite things, too, is Andrew's faith. Remember when he comes to Peter and he's like, John said that it's him. He just went I on love John's Andrew. word. Oh, him and gosh. Peter, he's, he's such a good combo to Peter. And I love how worried yeah. he is, like, about John. And he's just like, we gotta go and do something. And he's just like, he knew what he was getting into. Yeah, see, it's like Jordan and Ty, Cameron and Grant. Yes, it's that brother. Cameron is totally a son of thunder. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> And just how, yeah, the brothers work together perfectly, right? They just love each other. But Grant's, Grant's Matthew. Yeah, Grant, little, Grant little is a little Grant, Matthew. Grant's a little Matthew. They got Matthew. the same That's skin true. color, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be a little James if I could sing. Or I, I'd be, uh, I'd be, I'd be, uh, I'd be Gaius. I'd be the Roman. <laughs> <laughs> or <I'd> be, <laughs> You'd be Judas, Ty. Oh, yeah. Judas. <laughs> Half ambitious little guy. I want to make something of myself. I'm going to be a, I'm gonna no, sell a salesman, Ty. i sales, yeah. Yeah, yeah, salesman, I know, out. yeah. The movie. Sleazy it salesman. It did make me think of that. Sleazy, scummy <laughs> salesman. Yeah, that made me think of it, yeah, for sure. And just one last quote that I started with that to me talks about the second coming, which um, I said, it's in tomorrow. the end, the light will overcome the darkness. And that's our hope right? We know that it will. We know that God wins in the end. Well, Yay. And, and that's what I love too is of when they show Judas is that I, I love how they already show that turmoil of how he's still like a good person, like struggling with that turmoil of deciding what's best for him long term, like spiritually versus what's good for him temporally and right now. Like, oh, well, I can make a lot of money, but if I like, if I manipulate this person and take advantage of this person, am I really doing what's best? And then, and then how his mentor is like, oh no, don't worry. Take some time off like and, <laughs> but you just see how there's like that genuine desire to do good in him but then it's through the world that he's starting to lose it and he's like starting to focus on things that really don't matter which would be really interesting to see his arc like i said yeah. leading up to his betrayal it'll be really cool like anakin that. right very interesting hated that he turned to the dark side you're like no don't do it <laughs> You know, you're trying to like against Judas. me. Excellent. You're trying to against me. Yeah, you are the chosen one. <laughs> Back to our quote from the beginning. So, yeah, folks, it's an emphatic yes. I, I can't recommend the show enough. And I think the more I recommend it, the more I push people away from watching it. Like, not a Sunday school assignment. <laughs> no, please watch it. It's so good. I, I can't wait for can't. season three. This is bad to oh. say, too, but I feel like I'm kind of glad that our church didn't do it because then it can reach more people and it can, you know, cause I love that the church offered them to be able to film on our, um, yes. All the sets they on had the sets. built for the Bible, yeah. Because they believe in what they're doing, right? And it's so beautiful, and it can touch so many people. And it's kind of like how I have always loved. But Jordan don't be confused. It, just because it's reaches, not done by the church, it is doctrine. <laughs> he reaches so many people because now that he's admitted, he also that he's Christian. He, I don't think he knew for sure who he, what he was before, but I think he's so smart. I think you can't be that smart without coming to a conclusion that there is a Christ, right? I'm also going to say I'm impressed with how big budget it feels, even though I, it's still very much an indie show, how impressive they have made some of these spaces. Like, they've made big well, and, sets, and the, even the big the, area the locations music, and tons of The people. music and a lot yes, of the scenes, like, music. what's called, especially I noticed in the, the rooftop scene with Nicodemus, like, if I was, like, the score was beautiful, and it was, like, it set it up to where it was, like, a swelling feeling, so it kind of, like, it matched what it wanted you to feel, I felt like, very well, without forcing you to feel For that. For sure. I gotta say, that song they played, like, that that Christian rock beat when they're all walking all cool at the end. <laughs> that was so one. funny. Uh, I put a smile on my face, I'm like, that's fetching awesome. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> the Justice that's League. silly, but Jesus Christ is a rock The Mercy star, League, dude. Yeah, that's what they were. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was great. Just a real great moment. But again, this show, I, I can't fault it. That's the crazy part. Like, I, I'm, yes, there might be like, oh, this song I didn't like. Like, I will say my least favorite episode is the first episode. But that being said, it got me hooked. So that's like my least favorite thing about it. I'm like, I almost wish the first episode was something else. But I'm like, just watch the show. Like, if you watch it, I, I don't yeah, know anyone that it, just stick through it, I think, it. too. Because yes. it kind of, it grows on you as you get to know the See, mom's high because she was like, I don't really know if I like Jesus' personality and I didn't really, and I was like, first episode, I was like, this is no, dope. Dude. I, I love, love his it. personality. What I said was, I'm not sure that's his personality Doctor. because he's almost too likable. I know that sounds weird, but he wasn't, predi he wasn't foreordained to be 
the favorite person to be everyone loves him and he's handsome and all that other remember it says that yeah see and won't. i still think that's false doctrine the people that Mom say that he's he ugly freaking deformed <laughs> No, I don't. I thought just, he had a hump on his back, and he's like, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. I think it's like <laughs> our gospel. I think it's like, like the ah. gospel, like Jesus Christ's gospel. It's not easy. It's not easy to tell people about polygamy and all this stuff about our past. I like to think he had enough on his plate. Maybe, maybe God threw him a bone. It's like, look, you're very handsome. People are gonna just naturally <laughs> follow you. So that way, at least you can complete your mission in life. Because why do we have to throw a hump back on top of it, mom? Like, why do you have to give him this big boily face? Like, just, just let him be handsome. I did mom. not He's great. say that at all. <laughs> He's excellent. I, I wouldn't replace a but, single actor. I, I know I that Big either. James changed season one to season two. I'm like, I don't even remember who Big James was. Yeah, I don't so. remember the original Big oh, James. Oh, because I wonder what happened to him. He was super tall. That was the first so episode. The first All episode season is, two, Mama uh, yeah. says, And the replacement that got, he wasn't as tall. They keep calling him Big James. I'm like, well, he's not so big anymore. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, I was like, it's kind of a problem when you name a Big James and you get a replacement actor. But again, I'm like, why would you ever leave the greatest show of all time? Like, this show has I been know, crowdfunded. Right? They already have a plan. They want to do seven seasons. He became seasons, atheist. Uh, and the third really? one's getting started. And so will yes. the, will the last the season will be that his death or resurrection or both of those? I'm assuming so. I don't know. Or maybe they'll go I'm further beyond it. That'd be cool. Yeah, because of him, all his we visits to see bearded to Matthew. After. I mean, yeah, you have, yeah, you have, yeah, you have the disciples' lives. Uh, you could do so much. Oh I think gosh. it's interesting that the chosen, the poster, as far as I could tell, the one on MDB, it's it shows Peter, it's Peter, Peter's yeah. face, which I think is a very interesting choice rather than the Savior. You know, it's almost a telling of a story about, I would argue it's Peter primarily. He's the, he has the most as background. He's fall, and he views Yes, well, I, you get the most background. He's the first character you get introduced well, to. I love so many and times. And it's like him viewing the Savior yes, rather it, than actually the Savior. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. I love the yeah. director's choice of so many times it's about like uh, people and them talking about like, oh, I, I was about there. About the Savior. Without yes, and, yes, and like their experiences from that. It, like you didn't even see his baptism. You just heard word from it. And yeah, I that think that was interesting. I think they did avoid that though because there's so many religions watching this and they're trying like to avoid how, they how to baptism. baptize. So. Uh, I actually hope that they might even do a, a, flashback. a flashback when John gets killed. Spoiler alert. We know in the Bible that John gets beheaded from oh, that right. psycho yeah. Herod and his, and his crazy daughter. His daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah his daughter-in-law that. or daughter. Yeah. Man, what yeah. the fudge from that? His weird, creepy relationship with his daughter. Dance daughter -in -law. for me. But anyway, um, I think it, it was his daughter, if I'm not mistaken. It's his stepdaughter. Oh, it was his stepdaughter. That's right. It was his stepdaughter. Because he, because yeah, he, he took his, his wife, brother's yes, wife. His brother's I wife, yeah. Before he was. Well, that, and that, when well, he died after he what, killed Elizabeth. Because that's what John called him out on. He said, that's not okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's what he called him out on. Right, right. And that's why he kept getting thrown in prison. I love that. He he's just a, like, a troublemaker. does not care. He's just like, I'm going to go call him. Yeah. Like, I'm going to go call him. Call out the king. I'm going to be like, you're a terrible human being. You're like, sure, that'll go over really well. I know, right? He's got all these. People so I, I hope that they still might do a flashback of the baptism, maybe the episode when John dies, because they could show Christ and John more relationship and backstory that we'll see at the baptism that we'll get to fill in their relationship before he dies. I don't know. Maybe not. But like they, they could take those liberties and I'd be fine with it. I just I think we're in very capable hands. It's some of the best storytelling I've seen. Best character relationship driven story I've seen in a long, long time. So yeah. definitely check this out. We end every podcast by sharing movies that we've seen lately, movies that we're looking forward to seeing. Mom. So I just watched Bridgerton on VidAngel after Maddie told me to and it was heavenly <gasps> oh my gosh it's so it, you just have to edit all it, the dog it, crap and it's very I know it's show. like Jane Austen on steroids mom, mom you can't get the poop out of the brownie mom I did. I you can. It's I called pooped Vidangel. it out of it, and and that's why I even had to. I, I had to text Maddie. I was like, I don't really understand this one part because I didn't see what happened, so I'm not sure. And so she said she'd asked a friend. Anyways, it was great. So Bridgerton was fun. We started Lie to Me again, which is fun. And I want to see Maverick. I'm excited to go see that. Oh, Mom, you gotta go see it. I can't it. believe Dad hasn't taken you to that yet. Well, he wanted to, and then we totally spaced it. I haven't. So, anyways, and go see an IMAX. It's so good. Cameron, how about you? What are you seeing? Um, lately? just two movies well so halfway through the first iron man going through all the marvel movies with kelsey because she hasn't seen a lot of them and man the first iron man's oh, so fun. good and then i also watched uncharted with her 11 year old brother and um her dad gosh that movie is so bad i was on my phone 90 percent of it um i give it a two and then um <laughs> I also watched Paul. What? Why are you giving a two, Ken? <laughs> Why are you giving me a two? <laughs> and the, uh, I, I'm a great actor. I I'm the actor of a generation. Yeah, the, and the, That's the, my best the, the two mark. star the two stars I gave it were for Tom Holland being in the movie and for Mark Wahlberg being in the movie, and that's it. <laughs> 
And then thank you, Cameron. I'm glad you appreciate my act. And then um, yeah, if they wouldn't have had those two, it would have been a zero. And then I also watched Polytechnique, or however you say it, Polytechnique. Denny's film. Yeah. Denny. And goodness gracious, That's a sad movie. Yeah, it was after apparently he took a sabbatical and didn't make movies for eight years, and then he said he didn't want to make anything until he could make something that he was proud of, and then he made this, and he, um, and he made this, and he showed it for primarily to the families of the shooting first, and then asked if it was okay if he released it afterwards. I just bawled after that film, bald and bald. I thought it was super cool. Oh, is it based on a true story? Yeah, it's based yeah. on a, sh- a shooting at a school, and I think Europe somewhere. Uh, maybe it was Germany. I, I thought it was Canada. Is it? Maybe, I don't Europe? know. No, I'm pretty sure it wasn't English, like um, an English, like where they spoke English. Well, can well, they speak a lot French of, in Canada? Yeah, there's a lot of French. <laughs> no, I know, schools. I know. No, I, I, Denny's I know it's from possible Denny's from Canada. Canada. You know that? I, yeah, I know, but mm-hmm. I, I don't know. But he speaks French because. Oh he's, yeah, Mo- he's an well, it said Montreal. <laughs> That Montreal is in Canada, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Stupid French. But yeah, so I just thought it was, I thought it was so cool seeing the side effects and just like the aftermath of like, that's something that she's oh, wanted to that guy put behind that her. Yeah. Put himself his in his car. Eyes. Oh my gosh, dude. Holy crap, dude. Talk about acting. Like that's what Denny did such a good job just showing that like the unhingedness of the man with just his eyes, like just shots like of his eyes and him like. Yeah, he's Oh, yeah. Well, and I was talking about, you said the effects. I was talking about the guy that killed himself in his car afterwards because he felt so guilty for not helping more girls. Oh, yeah, how he left the room. Because, I mean, but I mean, a guy with an AR, like an assault rifle, tells you to leave the room and you have no weapon. Like, what are you supposed to just run right at him? I, it's just one of those tough decisions. Like, it's, and he saved that girl's life and saved a lot of other lives, but, ugh, horrible. Yeah, it's like the Schindler's list. You know, at the very end, he's like, how many more I could have saved? Yeah, and yeah. Cameron was like, ah, I feel nothing for this oh my guy. Gosh. I don't really care about this you guys story. are horrible. <laughs> I didn't cry because you guys are like, if you don't cry, you don't have It was soul. only because we told him. So Kevin's like, I'll prove to you I have no soul. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hell, Satan. <laughs> Yeah, how can you not cry at that moment? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I don't know. Oh. That's okay. We got him in The Chosen. Cameron did feel something. True. When watched yeah. I also cried, I also cried at the know. Beatitudes. Those are the only two times I cried in the season. In two seasons. Worthwhile. I cried every episode. Doesn't matter. Almost every. Yeah. Anything else, Cameron? No. Nope. Just going to finish um, Iron Man. And then I'm going to watch The Boys this weekend. <laughs> With Grant. Oh, yeah, cheap. Oh, I'm young. cheap. And then intermittent through watching watching The Chosen. You got to <laughs> yeah. hey, watch it on Video Angel, though, Cameron. I warned you. I, I warned know, you. I know. No, yeah. I will. Grant's a sicko, and he's like, ah. they like, why would I watch it on video, Angel? I'm like, so to preserve your I soul? I think he was, I think he was, I think he no, was No, Jordan asked him. No, he said he wasn't. And he's, Grant's like, I'm not. I know he said he wasn't, but he was joking. Oh. Like, he's like, why would I joke? Like, of course, dude. Anyway. Oh. I'm pretty sure he never watched. But anyway, whatever. Uh, yeah, I watched the boys' uh, first two episodes. I'm excited to see the third. And... Uh, I like it so far, and I like um, Homelander, the, of the Constant Gardener. The movie didn't help me like with my distrust of pharmaceutical companies any more than I already didn't. So the Constant Gardener with Ralph Fiennes, he did a good job. What about the one with Harrison Ford? That one made me not trust. Uh, <laughs> a clear and present danger, or are you talking about the? No, uh, no. Remember the one his buddy betrayed him. It's uh, his his wife, a one armed man. Oh, fugitive. Fugitive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It had a the Constant Gardener had a feel of the Minority Report needs. Fugitive, actually. That's kind of what made me think of. Uh, and then Africa thrown in there. And then, guys, okay, real quick. I just want you to know I become a Morbo. <laughs> Oh no, Morpheus. Okay, real quick. No. Morpheus, Stop. this movie, Morpheus, guys, okay. Stop. I just want to give you just a little quick history. This Stop. movie had 17% on critics yes. and 23 from audiences. Stop. Guys, go to Rotten Tomatoes right now. It is sitting at 71% from audiences. Now, mind you, these are all trolls. They have gone in and retroactively put, <laughs> they've demanded that this movie get put back in theaters. And it did. It did. So <laughs> let me put it back in theaters because people are paying and to see it, this I think movie. It, broke Even it, so bad. it, it did. Really? It, it's now like, it's breaking some types of records. But anyway, like going back into theaters and actually having a second revival, but they're like, let's morph. It's it's so funny. Anyway, it's like a verb. It's everything. It's a meme. Is I'm so glad because I movie? told you. It's, no, it's Morpheus. called Morpheus. It's one of the worst it's a dumb of all vampire time. movie, Mom. I know you would never like to watch it. Okay. Anyway, it's Jared it's Leto, like Twilight, the actor of a generation. He has now ascended. <laughs> he is now Nicolas Cage meme status. He's he, uh, Jared Leto is now ascending and getting the recognition he deserves. The actor of a generation. I've been saying this the whole time. So everyone on the podcast, you're listening now. Now it's happened. Morbius has ascended. He's now <laughs> he reached God's status. Well, Mom, he 
He's just it's freaking hilarious. He literally walked around on crutches to get into character, like to say, "No, no, no. he halted production yeah. to go to the bathroom with his crutches." Yeah, because he needed to stay in character. <laughs> this idiot, dude. This 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 method actor, dude. I love it. Jared Leto never change. Love you to death, man. You're you're my hero. Punk rock band, Thirty Seconds to Mars, <laughs> to to acting, you know, as a to getting AIDS. You've done it all, buddy, and you have nothing to prove. You got into a Sony <laughs> vampire movie. You you did it, and and. This it has a second revival. So anyway, love that. That is just so funny to me. My favorite meme was this car's broken windshield. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it says, somebody left. Careful, everybody. It's rough out there. I had two tickets to Morbius on my passenger seat, and now I've got six. <laughs> Someone left four extra tickets there to see the movie on his seat. I just thought that was so Oh, funny. I thought they said they, they robbed him to steal his tickets because they wanted them no, so no, bad. They, they, oh, they no, no, they left they more left tickets, tickets in there because <laughs> no one wants to see it. <laughs> it's literally, it's, 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 it's apparently, I've heard it's almost as bad, like it's even worse than 1984, which I thought was one of the best comedies I've ever seen in my life. But Oh, Wonder Woman, I yeah. Well, it, like I said, it was at, se- mind you, I checked when it came out. It was 17% from critics, 23 from audience, like no one liked this movie. It's just a dumb movie. But what's so funny is, have you seen Jared? Jared did a, a, a video on this phenomenon of this movie coming back. Uh, watch this video on it, Jordan. But basically... I've seen it already, yeah. Okay, the, my favorite thing is that people are commenting about the movie and they're saying, it's the most movie ever. They're not giving it a description. They just describe it as like, it was it was the, it was the most experience ever. <laughs> And, and like and it doesn't make sense, but you're like it's definitely a movie. It has the characters, it has plot. Well, did you did you see Ty? It doesn't tell I you sent, anything about it. I love it. I sent you a link to Elvis the Alien, his his channel. And oh yeah, he, does he review this? Yeah, no, but he he essentially does this fake video about how amazing it is and how Jared Leto's oh, really? like a god and stuff. It's just good. See, yeah, see again. I've been saying this on the podcast all along, and it finally happened. So we all witnessed this here, and I just think it's great. And Morbius again. This is kind of of like reminds you of the room phenomenon when it was a movie that was so bad that it was good that it got back into theaters and it had this huge cult following that's kind of what's happening here but it's like ironically liked which i i love even more because again jared leto takes himself so seriously it just is so delicious that this actor's like he's <laughs> getting this second wind ironically like people are like oh it's a great movie it's well they don't even say it's a great movie it's the most movie of all time and you have nothing i love that they're saying that okay i have to head out it's the most movie that ever movie yeah. take it easy cameron and uh bye love you let's m- more it's more than time. Love you, Cam. Anyway, uh, so that's all I've seen, and I'm looking forward to finishing Better Call Saul, the rest of this finale next month or whatever. Finishing up the boys and finishing up Stranger Things for ready for that to be done because. Yeah, it just feels like it's derailed. Oh, and dude. I just finished watching This Is Us. Oh my gosh, so good. This Is Us. Oh, Ugh. I couldn't watch that show. Oh my gosh. So it's too, good. Are you kidding me? Too Ty? painful. Too painful. I watched so the first episode. I'm like, I can't do this anymore. Oh, it's beautiful. So much emotion. Dysfunctional or just broken family. Oh, yeah. Seriously, broken. Nothing to see. Are you kidding? Yeah. So good. I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it's fine. Nothing against it. But anyway, uh, everybody, leave us an email, futuremovies at gmail.com. Leave us a five star review. Check us out on Instagram. Jordan does our highlights. Check us out on Facebook. Facebook and check us out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get podcasts. You check us out on Patreon. And that's everything. This has been Future Hidden Movie Gems signing out. Peace. Love you guys. Peace be unto you. Do you want to be healed? Bye. <laughs>